Hi there, it's Ken here with UAV Coach. Today I have with me this Autel Evo Light Plus, and we're going to unbox this drone. We're going to do a comparison against the Nano Plus and some of the similarities and differences. We'll do some flight demonstrations, basic ones, and then at the end, I'll give you my initial assessment. So let's get started. So here we go, the Autel Light Plus. Let's get this thing open and we'll look at what's inside real quickly. And then we're going to take this out and get a uh, quick demo and kind of do a introduction to the drone. So let's get it open. Now, compared to the Nano Plus, this is uh, the bag's a uh, fair amount bigger. So, with this premium bundle, we have the, the shoulder bag. You've got the accessories um, with the cables and such, the multi charger. Of course, we have the controller. The controller is Again, kind of the standard Autel controller. Um, what do we have here? We have, of course, the, the drone itself. Again, this is, um, if you saw our, our last, um, last video we did on the, the Nano Plus, this is quite a bit larger. Um, with the premium bundle, you get two extra batteries. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. Of course, we've got the uh, the charger and the other uh, power cable, and that's that's it. So, get rid of that for a minute. And I think um, what we'll do is get going, and we'll start to charge up the batteries. And as we are charging them, we'll take a look at the drone and the controller in a little bit more detail. Again, the standard package does not include the two extra batteries, the multi-charger, or the handbag. So let's start with the controller. Again, this is the standard Autel controller. Um, the joysticks get screwed into here. Uh, you have the home button, return to home button. You have the power button, which you push and hold for three seconds. And you have the flight pause button. The uh, control wheel for the gimbal is located here. You also have the function button. And you have the uh, photo and video start button there. Now again, this, this controller, if you saw my last video, um, it, it feels very comfortable. It's very robust. It only supports small devices in, in here. Um, but you've got the cables for, um, all the different, um, phones, plat platforms, things like that. So, um, you have the USB port here to charge the controller. So this is all the same as on the Nano Plus. If uh, you want to see more detail, uh, you can check out the previous video I did going through the Nano Plus. Now, the drone itself, as I mentioned, it's actually quite a bit larger than the Nano Plus. This is the Nano Plus, and this is the Light Plus. Again, this is 249 grams, and the Light Plus weighs 835 grams. So let's take a look at the drone in a little more detail. Uh, the propeller blades have these covers on them. Go ahead and take those off. Now, one thing I noticed that's different um, right now between this and the Nano Plus is that the Nano Plus does have a 
strap already around here to hold the propellers. So we'll get rid of these. All right, so we have the drone. It's, uh, like I say, it's very robust. It's a pretty good sized drone. We'll get it all unfolded here. Now, notice the uh, battery's just half installed here. Um, maybe on purpose, I guess. Can plug that in. So let's kind of start from here and we'll work our way around. Uh, the propellers different than the smaller models. The propellers are not screwed in. These are the type where you push down and twist to remove and install them. Um, they fold just like the other ones. Now these, the arms here are, uh, look to be made of composite material, very solid arms. Um, coming around on the front of the drone, you've got the obstacle avoidance sensors. Of course, you've got the uh, camera and gimbal cover. Um, the, on, the, on the back side here, you've also got uh, obstacle avoidance sensors. The battery, as I mentioned, just kind of clips in like so. You've got the power button on the back. Um, you've got some air vents here. And on the underside, you've also got two downward obstacle avoidance sensors, an LED for lighting up the landing area, and two ultrasonic sensors for measuring the distance between the aircraft and the ground. The camera has a one inch CMOS sensor. It takes 50 megapixel photos and it takes 6K video at 30 frames per second. Now, if we take a look and compare the specifications on the Autel Light Plus versus the Autel Nano Plus, the, as I mentioned, the video is 6K at 30 frames per second versus 4K at 30 frames per second on the Nano Plus. You have both 50 megapixel pictures on both models. The Light Plus has the 1 inch CMOS sensor. The Nano Plus has the 1 over 1.28 uh, inch CMOS sensor. The Light Plus has a 4 axis gimbal versus the 3 axis gimbal on the Nano Plus. They both take HDR in 4K. They both use the Skylink um, signal transmission system. The Light Plus has a wind resistance of level 7, whereas the Nano Plus has level 5. The Light Plus has um, six gigabytes of internal storage and the Nano Plus has no internal storage. The Light Plus uh, maximum flying time is claimed to be 40 minutes, whereas the Nano Plus is 28 minutes. Now, obviously the Light Plus is much bigger than the Nano Plus and much more substantial. I am guessing that this drone will be more stable in flight. Um, just because of the size and, and stability there. But we'll go out and test some of that. So that's about it for the unboxing and setup. We're not going to go into great detail on the Autel Sky app. If you do want to know more about that, check out the video that I did on the Nano Plus. We, I went into much more detail on the, the Sky app. Um, so for now, let's head outside and, and go get testing. When you first start up the Evo Lite, you'll probably need to update the firmware. And at the time of this video, the current version is 1.3.27. And anytime you get a firmware uh, update notice, you should go ahead and update it. It generally takes about 15 minutes or so, sometimes a little bit longer. And then what you have to do is reboot the aircraft and the remote control. So we're rebooting the remote here, restarting that and restart the uh, aircraft. Initializing aircraft attitude. Please take off later. Okay, so what we we'll want to do then is calibrate the compass and on the uh, Evo Light Plus, it is the same procedure as the Nano Plus and all Autel drones. Uh, there's three steps. The first step is to Rotate, rotate the drone 
horizontally 360 degrees and then you rotate it vertically 360 degrees and then horizontally on its side 360 degrees. We'll go ahead and do the automated takeoff to start off with and get the drone in the air and we just kind of look at the hovering capability. The drone hovers pretty well. Um, the Autel drones seem to move a little bit more than the DJI drones that um, I've flown. They move up and down slightly sometimes, but um, really not too bad. The controls here are, are pretty good. A um, little bit different than the Nano. They just are a little bit um, slower, but that's to be expected with the uh, heavier drone. Um, but the controls are responsive and, and the drone handles just fine. Now, as far as obstacle avoidance, um, it's basically, it's similar to the Nano Plus where you get the uh, yellow notification on the screen at about 30 feet and you get the uh, alert beeps and tones um, when the drone is, uh, once it gets too close to an object, it turns red and then you get the crosshatch red and the drone will not move any closer to the object that it's sensing. As you fly away from the ob obstacles, um, the, the intervals of the beeps and the intensity of the beeps change as you're uh, getting further away or not not right next to an object, then it tends to, it slows down. Um, <clears throat> and as you get away from any objects, then it will eventually just stop beeping. So we'll go ahead and uh, check speeds. In this case, in standard mode, um, we did a flight here of about 100 feet uh, distance and we reached a speed of about 22.5 maximum and I will note that the uh, speed both going forward and back was uh, pretty close to the same. Uh, there wasn't much wind um, here. We weren't flying too much wind but um, there was a little bit of wind. Then when we switched to ludicrous mode uh, we covered the same uh, distance just to try to see how fast it will get uh, move in that same distance and we were up to about 32.3 miles per hour. Ludicrous going um, backwards wasn't quite uh, the same as going forward. As far as some differences in video capability, the Evo Light Plus does have log color and HDR. Uh, the log is available in all the um, frame rates. The HDR function is only available in uh, 30 frames per second or less. And for the uh, Evo Light Plus, the 4K resolution goes up to 60 frames per second. Nano Plus um, only goes to 30 frames per second. And in addition, the Evo Light Plus has video resolution up to 6K, but it only goes to 30 frames per second in 6K. Now, another thing that we wanted to test on the Evo Light Plus was what we saw on the Nano Plus as well. Looking at quick shots, and in this case, we're doing the orbit uh, maneuver. Three, two, one, go. And as you can see, right when it first starts, the drone kind of races away from the subject. It loses the center of the target and then uh, tries to um, find it and, and get back to it. That was in orbit mode. And then also flick, it doesn't seem as pronounced, but you still have the same thing. Where right at the Three, beginning, it kind of two, loses the target. One. Um, Go. and then tries to regain the, the center point that was identified.
Now, another option that the Evo Light Plus does have that the Nano Plus does not is the Dynamic Track. This was a uh, firmware update a um, little while back um, for the Evo Light Plus. And in the testing here, the Dynamic Track seemed to work pretty good. Um, I wasn't moving that fast. It wasn't doing a lot of movement. Um, it did tend to come closer, which was interesting. It started out um, further away and then kind of started to get closer and closer. The uh, obstacle avoidance actually did pretty well here. As I walk under the tree, you can see that the drone uh, senses the tree and then moves away from that and goes around it. And the, uh, it seemed to lock on very well and, and stayed locked on the whole time. Again, it wasn't moving that fast, but uh, for this case, it worked well. Well, we finished our initial setup and demonstration of this Autel Evo Light Plus. The drone did well. It was intuitive, similar to the uh, Nano Plus. The controller is the same controller, so the controller felt good and, and it was responsive. Uh, this drone being a little bit heavier, there's a little bit more of a delay in the response time, but nothing uh, unusual there. Um, we did see a couple of the same types of issues as we did on the Nano Plus in quick shots using the orbit mode and the uh, flick mode, the, those two maneuvers. The drone um, has a little bit of trouble staying on target right at the beginning of the maneuver. It kind of misses a little bit and then tries to keep finding it. Um, another thing we ran into on this one was the gimbal interfering a little bit with the landing pad on initialization. We had the landing pad on a grass surface, which normally works out just fine. On this, the maybe because of the weight, but the gimbal was hitting the landing pad and, and had some trouble initializing. So that's another issue. We're going to do some more testing, some more thorough testing. And in another video, I'll be doing a comparison of this Evo Light Plus against a couple of the other uh, comparable DJI models. So keep an eye out for that video. So that's it for now. And from all of us here at UAV Coach, we wish you blue skies and safe flying. We'll see you soon.